Hey guys, welcome back. This video is going to be all about my vintage Yamaha Octave pedal. I've got a couple of mods in mind for this one, and I'm also going to compare its sound to the classic OC2. As far as I know, this pedal, the OC01, came out in maybe the mid 80s or possibly early 80s. I'm not really sure to be honest. Uh, let me know in the comments if you do know more about the sort of history of this pedal. There was an equivalent pedal or range of pedals made by Korg as well that were virtually identical. There's a Korg octave pedal called an OCT one. As far as I can tell, the schematic was identical. In fact, I'm using a Korg schematic for this pedal and yeah, it, it matches up perfectly. The enclosures look almost identical as well. So I assume that either Korg or Yamaha, Yamaha made these pedals in the same factory and then they were sold by the other company uh, under some kind of licensing agreement. I assume it was Yamaha who made them, but I'm not entirely sure. And that's because Yamaha also brought out a range of pedal boards specifically for these pedals. There was a SB40, SB100, and the really remarkable looking SB200. I've only ever seen these online in photographs. So that really does bring me to the main difference between the Korg OCT1 and this Yamaha OC01, and that is the DC connector. The Korg has pretty much a standard boss style DC connector, whereas the Yamaha has this six pin proprietary connector. And I assume that had something to do with the way it was hooked up on those SB uh, pedal boards. I've already looked at this connector and not only does it have nine volts and earth on two of those six pins, it also has input and output signals. So I guess the idea was you could put them all in your pedal board, uh, daisy chain them all up with this connector and you wouldn't need patch leads between them. And that really will be the first mod I wanna do with this pedal is make some kind of adapter for that so that I can use a standard uh, boss style power supply. But I think first, I think first I'll plug this in and we'll have a listen and compare it with uh, the OC2. great sounding pedal isn't it it's very different from the OC2 and I really think it's worth actually owning both because uh, I love them both you might notice that the OC2 oh by the way this is my stock OC2 and this is the one that I modded in a few, a few videos ago I will um, I'll talk about that in a sec but uh, you notice with the OC2 the stock OC2 that I was just playing uh, the octave is turned all the way up and the other two controls are turned down and I've done something similar with the Yamaha pedal I've got the direct all the way off you might notice the effect signal is on only about three there and that's unity for this pedal it also has a lot of gain uh, something like a further 12 db of gain on that uh, i guess that would be nice if you were stacking this with a fuzz pedal or something and you wanted to drive that pedal it's pretty cool i never really bother with that and usually have the pedal set exactly like this this polarity switch is a kind of a mystery. I'm not really sure why they would put it on the pedal. It doesn't really affect the tone too much. It does seem to track a little better in, in setting B, but um, it doesn't actually change the polarity or the phase of either of these two signals. In the schematic, what it's doing is actually changing the phase of the driver signal that modulates the input signal to create the effect. <laughs> it's not changing the polarity of something that you hear directly, is what I'm trying to say. So it's an odd choice. I do really love this pedal though. It has such a, it has such a gnarly sort of sound. seem to track slightly better than the OC2. Uh, it's probably marginal. You'll find, especially on open strings, that these pedals are going to start to glitch. Like that. Uh, 
just the OC2 is well known for it. Just skips the octave. This just like an overtone content is just stronger in those open strings. I guess that's the problem. This OC2, uh, which I've <laughs> relabeled OC2B, is the one that I've modified. And this guy is a stack control. You've got the direct signal on top and the octave on the bottom. And then these two controls are actually for low pass filters. This one's for the octave and this is for the direct signal. Um, if I set this filter to about 11 o'clock, it should be on a, something like 300 hertz, which is where the existing filter is set in the OC2, the, the stock OC2. So it should sound pretty much exactly, pretty much exactly like the OC2. Yeah, so it's pretty much the same, but the cool thing of course is that you can, whoops, wrong pedal. So you can now move that frequency around, which is really nice. So it's really dark sounding. And that's actually the sort of thing I want to add to the Yamaha pedal. And since I don't use this direct level really at all, I really only ever use the effect on its own, I think I'll replace that pot uh, with some kind of filter control. And maybe with this switch too, I'll hardwire it to B and then reuse the switch, possibly as a resonance control or something on the filter. But the first thing I have to do really is address that problem with the DC jack. When you pull this pedal apart, I tell you the first thing you notice is just how well made they are, how well engineered they are from a, I guess, an industrial design point of view. I mean, they seem to be, I mean, you think boss pedals are bulletproof. These are really hardy, these pedals. I um, it's really impressed the first time I pulled it apart. The circuit board is actually uh, kind of sandwiched between two halves of the enclosure. It sits on this ledge here. The jacks are actually soldered directly to the circuit board, which can be problematic um, if the jack itself gets bumped or whatever, it can crack the, the circuit board and, and cause an intermittent. But you can see that they've actually made this kind of steel bracket that joins the input and output jacks together. Um, so they're, yeah, really, really rugged design. So I've got this little six pin connector. These are header pins, so they're a standard size uh, and it comes with some little tags like that you can press in. If I flip it over, you can see that it's it's fairly easy to work out which pins are which. This second pin along here connects to this guy, which is a protection diode, so that's the positive. And this second pin from the right here is connected to the earth on the board, so that's obviously negative. Um, and you can probably see there's little tracks running from each of the outer two pins. This guy runs down to the tip on the jack and the same with the other side. So that's the input and output signal that I was talking about when you use this with that pedal board. So I guess the obvious thing would be to run a wire each from positive and negative to a DC jack like that. But the problem with that is that if you do plug a DC supply in, then that voltage is now in parallel with the battery. Um, and depending on the charge of the battery and the type of battery and everything, that, that can actually cause problems. Uh, it might even damage your power supply. It might even damage the pedal itself because the battery can get very, very hot in those situations um, and it'll certainly destroy the battery. So I guess you could just uh, remove the battery snap altogether and you'd be fine. To be honest, most pedals these days, of course, don't have battery snaps in them at all. Uh, so that's a, not a bad solution. But to be honest, I, I think I do want to use this battery, this pedal on batteries occasionally. So what I think I'll do is actually move this uh, red battery snap wire over to one of these unused pins and then run a third wire to the DC jack that utilizes this switch that they have on the side so that when you plug a DC in, it disconnects the battery. That's pretty much how all well, virtually all pedals that have batteries in them, certainly all the Boss pedals, that's how they work. The only issue with that, of course, is that if you ever did remove this, then essentially that switch is left open and the battery snap is not connected and the pedal won't work at all. So there's my little adapter gadget. I've actually glued two of the wires to the sides 
of the body of this jack and I also use some of this heat shrink that's lined with hot glue so that's uh, kind of in the interest of strain relief and just sort of um, ruggedness I guess you'd say should be pretty strong I also used a bit of contact cleaner on these connectors uh, let's face it they're close to 40 years old I don't believe I've ever used these pins before and I kind of crimped them as best I could with my needle nose but then I float a little solder in there as well so they should be okay but this is it's on there it's not super strong I might actually just press these other spare pins in just to give it a stronger connection but I think that's ready to go so the layout of the schematic is kind of similar to the OC2. Uh, we've got this signal tapped off here. Uh, we've got it's filtered. It's turned into a square wave. This dual flip-flop uh, CMOS logic chip uh, halves the frequency of that square wave, and the OC2 does much the same thing through this signal path here. We've got the filter, which is actually identical to the filter in this pedal, but what the pedals do with that half frequency square wave is really where the pedals part ways and it's why they sound so different. The OC2 as well as the EBS and I think the Ampeg pedal as well and, and several others use this idea where you've got a FET switching this uh, phase inverter and that works really well as we know. But this Yamaha pedal um, or Korg pedal really is kind of unique in that it uses this uh, half frequency square wave to modulate the signal through an OTA. So this is an operational transconductance amp. So it's, it's vaguely similar to an op amp. Uh, but this essentially in this configuration controls the gain, which means that every second cycle, so you've got a little waveform here, and then every second cycle, the gain goes to zero, then you've got a wave, and then zero, and then a wave, and zero. This is a bit of an oversimplification, but essentially it means that you end up with uh, a waveform that has an overall period of, of, of half the original waveform, but it does mean you end up with a pretty bumpy old wave, and that's why the, the, the pedal sounds so gnarly and, and kind of buzzy. Also like the OC2, um, Korg or Yamaha have decided to put a filter on the output of the effect. Um, they've put it at roughly the same point. This is about 280 or 270 hertz, and I think in the OC2 it's about 300 hertz, but the filter itself is very different. The OC2, if you remember from my other video, uses a third order low pass filter, which we ended up um, modding. But this pedal uses a very simple RC filter, a single resistor and a single cap. And so this creates a very different shaped roll off. You've got a very gentle roll off. Um, and what I want to do is actually replace this filter with something more similar to what I put into the OC2. Luckily these pots are just connected with wires so I can just like cut that wire and send it off to a filter and then back in. Um, I think the first thing I want to do is hear the pedal without the existing filter. So I'm going to remove C5 and we'll have a listen. Oh yeah, that sounds great. Really fizzy and synthy. That'll sound great with a low pass filter on it. So just like the OC2 mods video, I dragged a sample of the pedal into Ableton and then used the EQs to choose some high and low range points and a resonance that I think will suit the pedal. It might need a tweak or two after I've played a few gigs, but it'll certainly get me into the ballpark. After that, I used LT Spice to create a filter that mimics that response. And this is what I've come up with. It's a sell and key low pass filter. It's a pretty standard sort of arrangement. You've got two pairs of caps that you can switch between to give you that uh, high resonance. It'll sweep from 100 hertz or thereabouts up to about five kilohertz. And the resonance switch gives you a, a, a resonant peak of around about seven and a half dB. So that'll certainly give me a few more tonal options with the pedal. I've also created a little strip board design. And uh, here it is 
in the flesh you can see it's quite small it's only 15 mil by about 25 mil long and the reason it's that shape is because I want to fit it just in here I'm actually probably pointing the other way uh, once I get this uh, little filter pot in there I'll have a bit more space in fact I'll have plenty of space to mount that the pot itself uh, you can actually wire directly to these tiny little solder lugs but uh, you can see I've actually just connected to a, a tiny little piece of strip board that'll make it a bit a bit easier to wire to and also a little bit more reliable I would think so that's cool I was originally going to just use the existing pot like this uh, but I've realized that uh, if I remove this pot altogether instead of just sort of wiring it so that uh, it's like the pot is still there but turned all the way down. If I just remove the pot then R32 will be dangling and instead of this section here with two pots, two resistors and an op amp actually acting as a virtual earth mixer um, with R32 effectively out of the circuit I'm left with an inverting buffer with a 220k input impedance so I'm actually going to replace this pot with a smaller pot a smaller audio taper pot 10 or 20k 25k maybe um, and that'll just act as a master volume and probably better than a, a linear pot in that situation so with that in mind um, I'm going to use a yeah a 10 probably a 10k pot I think I've got some of those and I've realized too that this is uh, reference voltage this is reference voltage and so is the op amp so I actually don't need this cap um, with a 10k uh, pot I'd actually need to increase the value of this cap if I didn't want a, a base roll off so um, it's lucky I don't actually need this cap at all I can just connect that straight to the pot <laughs> Well, everything works as it should. I do prefer the audio taper pot as a volume control, but the pedal still just, it's got way too much gain. So I think I will give it a tweak. There's different ways I could uh, reduce the gain in the pedal. I could change one of the feedback resistors in these output buffers, but to be honest, it's probably better to do it a little upstream from there. So I think the easiest way is simply to put a resistor in line with the uh, volume pot. In fact, I can put it in here where the cap was supposed to go, so that's easily done. The tone control, or the filter, I guess, filter sweep, works really well. You can still get the original sound of the pedal if you set it on about three, three and a half. Um, but then, of course, you can... Uh, but then, of course, you can change it. And uh, get some really cool sounds. It doesn't really need as big a sweep as it got as it has. I guess when I was listening uh, in the studio, you know, you're listening to it with hi-fi sort of speakers and, and headphones and stuff. But with a bass amp, I, it really doesn't need to go all the way up to five kilohertz. So I might give that a tweak. But the main thing I want to change is this resonance. Sounds pretty impressive when you do that, but um, it's over the top, and I think seven and a half dB as a peak, uh, especially static. It's, uh, I think it's overloading these output buffers and it's just over the top. I can't really see myself using that on a gig as a bass player. So I'm gonna uh, tweak this, these caps and um, maybe reduce it to just a little sort of three or four dB peak. I really just wanted the switch to just give the filter a little more character. I didn't really want that outrageous change. So I'm gonna give it a few tweaks. Well, it's Sunday afternoon and I'm afraid I ran out of time the other day, but I have since redesigned that filter and also put those changes into place in the pedal itself. I've also had the chance to take the pedal to a couple of gigs this weekend and I'm really happy with it. I think it, uh, I think it really works well. The filter now only sweeps up to about three kilohertz instead of five, so I've taken off the best part of an octave's worth of uh, upper range. And the nice thing about that is that the knob itself is actually a little bit less twitchy to control, which is kind of cool. So you've got a nice uh, tone control on the effect. 
I've also reduced the gain by about 5 dB by putting that resistor in there. And so now unity gain is at about seven. Uh, where it used to be on three before. Um, and again, same thing with that control. It just means it's a little bit less twitchy to adjust. The resonance instead of a seven or eight dB peak is now like a three and a half or four dB peak. And again, it just makes it a little more useful. One of the sounds I quite like actually to use that resonance switch on is where you roll the filter right, almost right down, maybe down to about one. Where the sound is starting to get a little bit dead and a little bit lost. Well, if you turn the resonance on, it just makes it that little bit punchier. So yeah, it sounds great. I'm really happy with it. Having said that, uh, if I'm honest, mostly this weekend, I've used this pedal with the frequency control within maybe 10% either side of that sort of original setting. <laughs> and um, it may seem a lot of effort to go to, to just uh, have a subtle adjustment on the tone, um, but it, it's nice to be able to really just to really kind of subtly dial in the amount of, I guess, bark that the pedal has. I'm sure if you're a bass player, you'll know exactly what I mean when I'm talking about um, these subtleties making all the difference. In fact, I think there's often a really fine line between having a bass sound that's just too strident in, in any particular way and it's, it's kind of sticking out too much. And on the other hand, being too dark and muddy and kind of lost in the mix or in the mix or in the context of your band on stage and it's often the subtleties that can really kind of make or break your tone and and help you find a place for your sound uh, amongst the other musicians you're on stage with <laughs> i'm guessing uh, if you play a lot of rhythm guitar you probably go through the same sort of thing so if you do have this pedal or the Korg version, keep an eye out on my website because in the next couple of days I'm going to post a schematic uh, that's updated and also a, uh, that little stripboard design. I've had a ball modding this pedal. I'm really happy with the way it sounds and I hope you've enjoyed the video as well. If you are into modding pedals and luthier stuff and tech work and whatever, do consider subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.